Hi, it's Anne Emery. I'm recording from Madison, Wisconsin today. I was in town to teach a workshop. And speaking of workshops, this is a common challenge I see among the groups that I do workshops with. Slides like this. I've taken a screenshot of an anonymized slide. The challenge here is twofold. First of all, how do you take your bullet points and transform them into a graph? That's something that all of us struggle with. Like what type of graph is it? How should it be formatted? What's going to be easy to understand? But then second of all, the point of this video is, what if your data doesn't go in order? What if you don't quite have chronological time series data? So can you see on this slide, we've got data for FY19 and we've got data for FY18, but then we're missing a decade's worth of data. It goes all the way back to FY07 before that. So what do you do? How do you show that graphically if the data is simply not available? Some people would say, well, just forget FY7 altogether, just show the FY18, FY19 in your graph. And it's like, but sometimes that number is really important. So how do you show like you had FY7 data and then you're kind of guessing of what the numbers were and then you have FY18 and FY19 data. So let me show you a couple things that we tried in, in that workshop because I think this applies to a lot of you as well. Okay. So we tried something like this first. We filled in our table of all the data we did have. And of course, you can see all the data that we didn't have in the middle. And Excel doesn't quite know what to do with that. Like it didn't even put anything at all for FY7. It just left it blank. There's not even a dot or anything there. And then there's all this white space like, okay, that's not going to work, obviously. So here's what we did instead. I'll show you the solution and then I'll show you some of the behind the scenes Excel secrets as well in case you want to try this. Here's the edited version. Okay. Can you see it? So we purposefully only labeled FY7 down here and we labeled FY18 and 19 over here. We had a dot show up for FY7. We had dot shows up dots show up for FY18 and 19. And then we added a dotted line in the middle to show that those values are estimated. They're a little bit uncertain. That's what dotted lines are great at. That's what they shine at is showing that uncertainty or that estimation in there. Okay. So how did I do this? It takes a little bit of behind the scenes magic. So I'll give you a quick tour. You have to fill in some placeholder numbers here of your estimated values. So each one of those increases by this magic value right here, 5.27%. So here's what I did to calculate that. I took the FY18 number minus the FY7 number divided by 11. Why 11? Because there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 11 gaps to fill in. So I had each of these increase by 5.27%. Can you see this value here? It's like 30% plus 5.27%. And this one is that 35% plus 5.27%, et cetera. I'll share this Excel file with you if you want to look at the formulas. If you're not familiar with Excel formulas, like have at it, enjoy exploring it. Okay. And then you'll notice that these placeholder values in here, these estimations, they don't have fiscal years above them because I don't want them to show up in the graph. I want to focus on the numbers that we do have data for. Okay. So that's how I set up my table. That's purposefully empty here with the fiscal years. And it's purposefully filled in with placeholder data that 5.27% here. Then what you do is you highlight this section of the table, the first two rows, you go up to insert, you insert a line graph, just like you've done a million times before. And what it gives you is a solid line. How do you get the dotted line appearance? This part's really easy. Okay. So if you click on the line the first time, do you see how all of the dots are selected with those little dots? Like you can see them, they're all selected, but what you can do is you can click on them. Let's just take this one, for example, a second time. And you would just edit that piece of the graph one at a time, the, the solid line preceding it. Okay. So you can right click on there and with the outline, you can change the color. You can change the weight. You can also change whether it's a dashed appearance or a solid line appearance. So that's what I had done. I usually pick either this really teeny tiny square dot one or the one right below it, the dash. So you might want to try both. Some of them work better if they're small. Some of them work better if they're big. It kind of depends on, you know, is this going into a big PowerPoint slide? Is it going into a small word document? Things like that. So I didn't change them all one at a time though. I knew that the majority of the graph would be dotted. So I just, you know, clicked on it once and right click outline dashes. I changed them all to be this dotted appearance. And then I went back and just 
solidified a couple pieces on that line with the, here it is, the solid line. Do you see what I'm doing there? I'm just changing one piece of the graph at a time, okay? A lot of times people think that, um, <laughs> a lot of times people think I'm doing this, okay? Insert shape and adding some type of dashed line. I mean, I guess you'd get the same appearance there, but that would be a lot of work, okay? I don't wanna add like text boxes and shapes and lines and things on my graphs if I can avoid it. I do a lot of automation projects too where uh, the more like built-in features you can have, not shapes, not text boxes, the better. Okay, so I will provide this file if you wanna download it and explore it, you know, tweak it for your own graphs, have at it, have fun. Don't forget, comment and let me um, see your examples of dotted lines in your projects if you run into this scenario. If you have a scenario where like you have some data and then you don't have a bunch of data and you have some other data and you need the dotted line, let me see how you've applied this to your work. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.